I want you to take a look at this uh, picture and uh, you don't have to tell me but tell yourself what do you see take a minute now if you're a black person uh, you may see one thing if you're a white person I don't know maybe you see something else if you're a progressive you may see one thing if you're conservative you may see something else if you're an equal rights for everybody person you may see one thing if you're a racist you may see something else now I'm gonna tell you what I thought when I saw the picture I saw a picture of 16 women in some kind of a formation basically taking a picture now to notice that they each had their hand raised was something that I had to have my attention drawn to but yeah I, okay I, I, I saw that and still nothing clicked then I found out that these were uh, cadets uh, that were uh, getting ready to graduate from West Point okay group photo still nothing clicked then I came across this story that uh, these women who have outlasted numerous other people men women black white in between and uh, are in a position to uh, graduate as officers from West Point and now they are coming under quote-unquote investigation for this picture because it quote-unquote projects some type of a political statement now going back and doing a little research it's my understanding that the graduates from West Point especially the graduating women from West Point traditionally take this type of picture now I don't know if it's with a fist raised or whatever but they they take this type of picture but all of a sudden this uh, picture has created a brouhaha and is placing their future careers in jeopardy my question is why all of a sudden is it political when a bunch of black people and in this particular case a bunch of black women get together and appear to be showing solidarity um, it's the same if you had uh, replaced all of these black women with black men and they had been standing up there uh, with a fist raised it probably would have been even worse this country's got a major problem with race you know it I know it country knows it so every time any type of a racial attribute can be attributed to any situation uh, any motive it's done so when a black cop accosts or <coughs> excuse me kills a black suspect victim whatever you want to call them 
never raises uh, never raises an eyebrow. When a white cop arrests, victimizes, or kills a white person, very little uh, fanfare, pretty much none. But let it be a white cop uh, that kills or victimizes a person of color and if any racial motivation can be attributed to it your MSNBC's your CNN's your Fox's they're going to jump all over it your MSNBC is going to jump all over it from the progressive or liberal point of view and your Foxes and your CNNs are going to jump on it from your quote unquote conservative point of view. Now I say liberal and conservative and instead of saying um, non-racist and racist that those are just my words you, you, you add your own to them but they're going to stay on these things. Um, one side's going to look for um, reasons why the, the victim of the police brutality uh, should not have either been in the position or was just a bad person and deserved what he or she got. And the other side uh, is going to look at the cop and, and um, basically uh, go into his background and, and in some cases, not all, but in some cases, try to humanize the victim. This is not right. This is not right. Until we get to the point in time where uh, we can solely deal with one human being acting in a manner inconsistent with humanity versus another, we're going to have this problem. Now, I'm going to run this story, which I came across uh, this morning. Uh, Roland Martin's doing the story. And um, in my mind, this, this whole thing is ridiculous. This, this photo should not have generated any kind of investigation, etc. It is what it is. Now, if they wanted to uh, grab a couple of the women and, you know, and ask them a couple of questions, okay, you call that an investigation. I, I call that uh, just cursory. One or two of them ask them what, you know, hey, I see this photo, you know, what, what went down, you know, innocently, and they give you, you know, an innocent and obviously the correct answer. We were just taking a photo like they do in every year. That should have been the end of it. This shouldn't have even been a news story, but it, it's turning into a news story now. So anyway, here, here we go. Here's the, um, here's the, the story as uh, given by uh, Roland Martin on uh, News uh, One Now. This photo here at West Point is causing considerable consternation and has now led to an investigation. 16 black women, 16 female cadets, raised their fists while posed in uniform for what is a traditional old corpse photo at the West Point. The inquiry is to determine if these young women broke the rules and some say breaching a defense department policy that says, quote, members on active duty should not engage in partisan political activity. Uh, after the picture was posted on the Army Times website, several people questioned if the picture was in support of the Black Lives Matter movement or a salute to the 1968 Olympic medal sprinters Tommy Smith and John Carlos, Carlos or just 16 black women with their damn fist raised. <laughs> now that's what gets me because anybody who knows anything about the Black Lives Matter movement knows that it's two hands up and the term that they use is hands up don't shoot. So some ignorant asshole takes a look at women with their fish rays and they attribute it to the Black Lives Matter movement. Give me a fucking break. Now if they want to turn around and say it's a flashback to 1968 with John Carlos and Tommy Smith okay when they uh, received their awards well even that's you know I mean it's a little closer but John Carlos and Tommy Smith raised their fist after 
they received their awards, not three weeks before they received their awards. So even that doesn't fly. Really, what's going on here? Others say the young cadets were merely celebrating their upcoming graduation on May 21st. Here to talk about this via Skype is a mentor to some of those young ladies and a 2003 West Point graduate, Mary Tobin. Mary, Mary so, so explain this. First of all, I read another story uh, by uh, one of the board of uh, advisors, a woman on the board of advisors, who said on this day, West Point students take different photos in different poses uh, that sort of recreate uh, old photos. Yes, thank you, Rolla, for having me here this morning to, to tell the other side of the story. Yes, the old core photos, you can take many different versions, right? So that photo with the fist rays was just one of three. They took one, a very stoic photo with their sabers, no smiling, no particular gestures. They took a more goofy, lighthearted photo in which they're laughing, and, and that's very, very common in which you might take a picture with mascots, you might take a picture with a beach ball, and then they chose a third photo, which I fully believe was a symbol of pride and unity with their 16 sisters. I don't understand how anyone could look at that picture outside of the core cadets and decide that these women were a part of some subversive movement or any political alignment. Well, and the thing is, well, if you say that is a political statement, how do you even get that? Because it's not, it's not tied to Democrats uh, or Republicans. Uh, it's not, this, this is somebody making a subjective decision. I mean, first of all, raising your fist, okay, you, that can be tied to any number of things. That, that's not a political statement. Absolutely, Roland, absolutely. We have teams uh, and clubs and moments in time in which we celebrate so many different uh, events at West Point in which the entire Corps of Cadets raises their fist. I can understand how one outside of the Corps of Cadets may think so, but you have to look at the whole perspective, and that's what I've been saying. This is a, a case of cultural ignorance. You have to look at the whole perspective. These young ladies, they turned down scholarships at some of the most elite schools in the country to attend West Point. We were taught for four years the regulations around any, co any connection to a political movement, any connections to a particular party or candidate, and to think that in one snapshot, three weeks away from graduation, these women would put all of that on the line just to make a statement? Absolutely not. It's beyond the realm of comprehension, and it was a symbol of pride and unity. What does it say uh, if you're black and you raise your fist, you scared the hell out of white folks? <laughs> <laughs> we Pretty much. that West Point is a reflection of the American society, because that's exactly what it is. West Point has a dark discriminatory past. We don't try to necessarily hide from it, but it's there. And we don't talk about it because we put the mission of developing leaders of character and honor and the greatest military in the world, we put that mission first. However, we are still black in a predominantly white institution, a sea of white men, and we have 16 black women who did it, who outlasted men and women, black and white, and yet we still cannot simply be looked at as black women officers. We have to be looked at as black women who are trying to subvert the system and somehow tear down 214 years of time out of tradition. It's beyond me. I want to go to our panel, Barbara Arnwine, founding president of the Transformative Justice Coalition, Gianna Caldwell, Republican strategist, and Carmen Berkeley, civil, human, and women's rights director at the AFL-CIO. Um, they're investigating. I'm trying to figure out, Barbara, what are they investigating? It's just outrageous. First of all, they don't desegregate on the basis of sex until 1977. Then they have the nerve to take black women. You know, sometimes I think just being a black woman in this society is a political statement. That people just see us and whatever we do, it gets interpreted in a political way. Remember that when Howard, when Harvard, when all the schools were making statements about Black Lives Matter, what was the gesture? It was hands up, don't shoot. Let's get it straight here. These people are ignorant. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. It really caused them to question the entire administration at West Point. And black women, let's make our voices known on this. We're not going to let these sisters take a fall for nothing that makes sense. And black men, we need you to. Carmen, 80% of the, 70% uh, of the students at West Point white. 80% are men. 
Uh, this also reminds me of when the army uh, did not allow uh, certain hairstyles that black women oh, said, yeah, the braids, makes it better. Yeah, oh, and, and, they, and they finally changed that, but it was, I mean, it was a whole lot of drama over that as well. Yeah, I, you know what, Barbara's right. Anything that we do as black women is seen as being political. <laughs> photo I didn't see black militancy I saw black girl magic and so I think in our country black patriotism means something to us because our history is not sunshine and rainbows our history is about discrimination so us putting up our fist is a sense of pride that's what black patriotism means and I'm actually really happy that those are the women that will be fighting on the front lines to save my black life Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think Ms. Tobin articulately stated her point in terms of what this really means. When I looked at the photo, I thought it was black unity. I didn't think that it was anything political. As a former federal employee who understands the Hatch Act, this wouldn't be something that would merit an investigation. In my opinion, and I agree with the ladies on the panel, I do believe that when people see African-American women and men uh, make statements like this right fist, they make it something political, which I don't believe in this case it was. Exactly, and that's normally what happens. When you see a whole bunch of black people together uh, of one mind, all of a sudden it's this big major uh, issue. And that's got to change because when you see a whole bunch of white people, you know, a whole bunch of Jews, uh, together uh, doing something that never raises a a any a any kind of flags. It's not something uh, uh, unusual, I and mean, people just you know pay it no mind. But when you see a bunch of black people either marching together, walking together, you know, doing anything together in uh, solidarity, all of a sudden it's this giant issue. A final comment. Well, first of all, i like to say that this West Point administration is probably the most progressive and involved that I've ever seen. Um, they've not shied away from the issues. However, West Point is a reflection of American society. So if there's sexism, racism, homophobia, then there will be that within the poor cadets. I'll say that this is just a part, this is just a start of the discussion. And I thank everyone for their support. Let's keep pushing back and supporting these women because in just a few weeks, they'll go out into the military in a time of war and there'll be leaders of our nation's sons and daughters. That's what's important. That 16 out of a thousand graduated from West Point. All right then, Mary Tobin and uh, West Point. Uh, this this is real simple. If you can hand to hand combat, I'm sure you want to see these sisters do this. You want to see them do this, and then doing this to somebody else. Uh, and so, to, and so I say this here to all the sisters at West Point. Y'all hold it down. Stay strong. Stay black, and give them hell. All right, Mary, we appreciate. It. Thanks a lot. All right, folks. That's all. All right, so. Um, Hopefully, this investigation gets wrapped up quickly and um, that no notations uh, whatsoever on their service records, uh, which would uh, delineate them from um, other uh, people, especially in their, uh, their uh, attempt to uh, ascend up the ranks.